Hi and welcome back everybody, me Robert here for another video about SAP Cloud Integration. In this video I will show you how to post a JSON body from a sender that can be for example SAP S4 HANA Cloud or Postman for testing purposes to an external REST API via an integration flow. You might think that's a standard process. Well, it is, but there are still a few pitfalls you should be aware of. If you want to follow along and you haven't set up SAP Cloud Integration yet, please watch my previous video, Setting up SAP Cloud Integration in SAP BTP. In that previous video, you also learn how to trigger iFlows with Postman that we will use in this video as well. If you like this content, please consider giving a like and subscribe and also smash that notification bell below so you guys get immediately informed if we publish a new video. But now without further ado, let's get to it. All right, here you can see that I'm already in the integration suite. If we want to create a new integration flow, we click on design and then on integrations and APIs. Here we open the integration package IP1 that we created in the last video. And then we click on artifacts. Here in the top right, we find the edit button and we click on it. We can create a new integration flow by clicking on add here and then we choose integration flow. We name this iFlow post JSON to REST API. This also prefills the ID for us and we can click on add here. Once the iFlow is created, we can click on it to open it. In order to change it, we have to click on edit here in the top right again. Now we click on the sender and we draw this arrow to the start symbol here. Here we choose the HTTPS adapter type by double clicking. Then we pull up the configuration window from the bottom of the page. We click on connection and here we can enter an address that has to start with a forward slash. We give it the name forward slash post JSON to REST API, for example. We keep authorization by user role and the user role is aspmessaging.send, but we remove the CSRF protected flag here. Then we want to connect to an external REST API, which is our receiver here. And for this purpose, we click on the start symbol here in our iFlow and we choose the plus symbol. Then we search for the request reply step, which is part of the external call here. And by clicking on it, we can add it to the iFlow. Next, we draw the error from the request reply to the receiver. And here we choose HTTP as adapter type. And then I click on save. This gives us an error saying we need to enter an address to the receiver. So we click on the HTTP adapter here, then we pull up the window from the bottom and we click on connection. Here in the address field, we enter the address to our external REST API. In my case, this is a test endpoint on my own gt4m.com server. This endpoint does nothing else than returning the retrieved data to the sender in a JSON format. Therefore, with this endpoint, we easily can test if we retrieve a posted JSON body. As method, we keep post here and as authentication, we use a basic authentication, since this address requires a basic authentication. The credential for this endpoint I have stored in a security material named gt4m test user. Therefore, I enter the name gt4m test user here in the credential name. All the security materials that you need you can create and find here on the monitor, on the menu on the left side. 
But before I can show this to you, I click here on the Save button. Now I click on the Monitor, Menu Entry and Integration and APIs. Here we scroll down and we find the security material under Manage Security. We click on it. And here you find my security material name GT4M Test User. You can create your own security material here by clicking on Create <clears throat> and then choosing the user credential type you need. For example, user credentials and then you fill in all the required passwords and so on. Then you click Deploy. Now let's switch back to our integration flow. And edit it again. Then we pull up the integration flow configuration window here. We choose runtime configuration. And here we can define the allowed headers that we want to allow with the request. For example, content type. And if you want to allow multiple headers, you can provide a header list here and separating it with the pipe symbol. But we just need the content type here and then we click Save. So a little spoiler at this point, this iFlow will not work as you might expect with POST requests. However, we will deploy it anyway so that we can test it. Therefore, we click on the Deploy button here. We choose the runtime profile and it says post JSON to REST API is triggered for deployment. OK. And here we can see that this iFlow is deployed successfully. Now we click on deployment status here and we choose navigate to manage integration content. And here we find the URL or the endpoint for this integration flow. We copy it. Then we open Postman and we create a new GET request. Then we paste the URL of our endpoint into the URL field of Postman. Then we change the method to POST. And then we enter the correct authorization credentials here in the authorization menu. Please note that I've explained in detail how to set up this authorization here. So please watch my previous video, how to set up SAP cloud integration in SAP BTP, because I will not cover it right here in this video again. Then we click on body here in the menu of Postman and we provide a raw body of JSON. For example, we can provide this JSON string here for testing purposes. And then we click on send. And here at the bottom of Postman, you can see the response that we retrieved from the remote API. However, here in the response from my remote API, I can see that the JSON parameter is null. This means that the remote endpoint did not receive the body that we posted here in the request. So how can we fix this? We switch back to our integration flow and we will try to find out if the integration process received the post body at all or if it just didn't make its way to the receiver. In order to find this out, I will activate tracing. For this purpose, I click on Monitor here in the menu, Integrations and APIs. Then I scroll down to Manage Integration Content and I choose Started here. Here I find my started integration flow and I change the log level from Info to Trace. Then I switch back to Postman and I send this post request again. Once the request is finished, I switch back and now I choose Monitor Message Processing here. And here under Logs, I click on Trace. And here on the right side, I can switch to Message Content. And then on the left side, I look for the step that contains the message before the receiver adapter. And then I choose Payload here. 
And here I can see that the iFlow retrieved the JSON body that we sent. However, it hasn't been sent to the external receiver. Therefore, we need to make some changes in our iFlow. So we edit our iFlow again. So we switch back to our iFlow and we edit it again. And now we add a content modifier by clicking on the start button and then on the plus symbol. And here under transformation, we find a content modifier. We click on it. Now we click on the content modifier. We pull up the window from the bottom. And here we need to create an exchange property by clicking on exchange property here. Then we click on add. And here we define a name for the JSON body that we retrieved from the post request. We name it, for example, my body. Then we have to change the source type from constant to expression. And here we can get the source value of the body with the expression dollar, then a curly bracket, and then in dot body. And then we close the curly bracket. And then we have to define the data type. Since this is a JSON string, we can define java.lang.string here. Next, we click on the message body here. And here we change the type from constant to expression as well. And here in the body field, we type dollar curly bracket property dot my body. And then we my body here. And then we close the curly bracket again. Then we save the iFlow again. And we deploy it again. Then we switch back to Postman. And here we post the request again by clicking on the send button here. And now you can see here that we successfully retrieved the JSON payload that we initially posted here. So that's all for today. If you like this content, please click the like button, the subscribe button, also notification bell below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.